do. And every servant of God must have a controversy with this spirit. This spirit cannot be tolerated. If you are not a child of God, you could be possessed by that spirit, but as a child of God, you cannot because you are possessed by the Holy Ghost. But it does not mean that that spirit cannot operate through your flesh. It just means it can't operate through you in your trueness, as in through your spirit. But it can operate through your flesh by oppression. Papa gave this uh, video the other day. I can't remember the gentleman's name. I had seen the video before, but it wasn't the first time that I had heard these things. I would heard them a long time ago, many years ago, from the Holy Spirit. And I can tell you that the Lord has a controversy with the Spirit. I'm going to whiz through some things, and then I'm going to get to the meat. But I want you to, all of it's meat, but I want you to have kind of background understanding. God is a restorer and wishes that all things be restored to divine order. Do you agree? Do you agree? Right. If you look, there's two spirits I want to look at just briefly, then I'll go into the, the main part. So this is teaching on the spirit of Jezebel. One is the Elijah spirit, and the other one is the Jezebel spirit. Both are what you would call ancient spirits, but they have forstood time. They have forstood time, and they can operate through different people. There was a real woman called Jezebel that was spoken of in Revelation chapter 2. There was a real woman called Jezebel who was the wife of Ahab. But they of themselves are nothing in comparison to that spirit. That spirit used a vessel. So let me explain something to you. What Elijah signifies and what every son of God should signify is the restoration of the order of things. If you want to look at the traits of the spirit of Elijah, which you will see in various sons of God to different levels, you will see passion, fervor, fire, zeal that consumes loyalty to God, discipline to God, God being everything to that individual, and one who seeks to restore the divine order, the order of Yah, the order of the Lord. Matthew 6.10, that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Matthew 17, 10 to 12, I'm going to whiz through some scriptures and then we'll come to the points. But I want to give you a little background because we'll talk about Jezebel and what she does, what that spirit does. In Matthew 17, verse 10 to 12, it says, And his disciples asked him, saying, they were asking Jesus, Why say the scribes that Elias must come first? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. So, this embodiment of Elijah shall come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah has come already. And he was speaking of John the Baptist. Because what did I say? That spirit is the spirit, is a spirit from God. That spirit dwelt in and on Elisha. He received a double portion of the spirit of Elijah. He did not become Elijah, but received a double portion of the spirit. Also, the Spirit was in John the Baptist. It says that John the Baptist will come in the spirit and power of Elijah. But wherever that Spirit manifests, it is about the restoration of things. So we see now that Jezebel is running up and down the world. But the problem now is not that she is running up and down the world and you are seeing sexual morality 
and apostasy, and you're saying they're breaking away of the commandments and the divine order of things, and men calling themselves women, and women calling themselves men, and soon they'll call themselves dogs, and whatever it might be, and I'm not comparing humans with dogs, but just understand what I'm saying. But it's the fact that she has crept into the church. She didn't creep into the church this year or last year. She has been creeping into the church. And it says in Malachi 4, 5 to 6, uh, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. That again is restoration. And Acts chapter 3, verse 19 to 20 says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. And then in verse 21 it says, For he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things. Because of time, I'll skip through some scriptures. But I want you to know that God is on the work of restoration. He's on the work of restoration. But there is a spirit. There is a demonic spirit. She can't stop God, but she's working. She's working. So if you think God is on restoration and restoring all things, what do you think Jezebel's spirit comes to do? Jezebel's spirit breaks down divine order. She looks for servants or tries to creep her way to destroy the altar. Her main thing is to destroy the altar. But she will go after the servants of the altar. Those servants could be the head of the house, the pastors, the prophets, bishop, whoever it might be. She that spirit goes after them because they are the keepers of the altar. And she wants to destroy the altar. She seeks to destroy the altar of God, erode spiritual authority. Because of time, we'll talk about how she works against the servants of God. But I want you to know that the spirit of Jezebel can operate through a man, through a woman. And there's sides of the Jezebelic spirit that are very deceitful. But I can say to you this, where you see a tolerating of sensuality, because she's a religious spirit. She's a religious spirit. She has a facade of Christianity, but it's not true. If this is the line of God, she is walking here, but she's walking close. She looks religious when she's using people. They look like they're lifting holy hands, but their heart is everywhere. They make up rules. Okay, let me give you an example. Now, I want us to say quickly, just because you have or you there's certain traits that you might see. Like you might see a believer, I don't know, let's give it a open, in an occasion where they're manipulating. I don't say a believer, but a believer in their flesh, manipulating, doesn't mean they are operating, doesn't mean the spirit of Jezebel has taken hold of them. There's still things that have to be worked out. But the Jezebelic spirit ultimately is there to erode the altar. They are, it is there to destroy the things and the order of God. It brings servants into apostasy. The abandonment of spiritual belief. It is controlling, manipulative, sexual, seeks to usurp authority and is destructive. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1 to 2, it says, and, and, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword and how he had slain the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also 
if I make not thy life as a life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Do you think she was more concerned about the prophets of Baal, which probably could be replaced in one day or one week? Yeah, she was slightly slighted. But the big issue that she had was that Elijah was doing what the Lord wanted him to do, which was to restore Israel, restore their hearts back unto the Lord. And he rebuilt the altar. She had a big problem with that. Why did she go after those 100 prophets? Why did she put the servants of God into hiding in caves? Why did they have to lay low? Because she didn't want the worship, the true worship of the Lord. The Lord said, I'm looking for those who will worship me in spirit and in truth, not <laughs> in emotions and sensuality. Not by your senses. If you want to operate God, work with God by your senses, you are not going anywhere. You have to have the ability to operate by your spirit and put aside your senses. Okay. I won't go too much into that. But it's the truth. So, there is no deliverance without knowledge. Through knowledge, the righteous man is delivered. Proverbs 11.9 says, An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Everyone controls and manipulates at times. But not everyone who does it is a Jezebel. I would say to you, when you see multiple, many facets of this trait, operating consistently within an individual or within yourself. I'm not speaking to, if you think I'm just speaking, I'm speaking to everybody. Everybody. And anyone who will listen to this message. Everybody in the body of Christ. Because we must have the same controversy with that spirit as the Lord does. Otherwise, you will not be able to spot it and you will not be able, by the grace of the Lord, to stop it. You will end up being sucked in and tolerating a fake balance. I was sitting down with the Lord today. It was so funny. I was talking to the Lord, and it's like, maybe somebody wants... Don't think this is... If you think I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. If you think I'm not talking to you, then it's okay. <laughs> I'm talking to myself as well. You know? You have somebody who says, oh to their husband. Ah, uh, our children should go to sports day today and it's Sunday service. And the husband is saying, I remember what I said, she can operate everywhere. I just want to deal with the altar. But you have an altar in your house as well. And the husband is saying, no, the children can't go. They must come to church. And the wife says, doesn't the Bible say that they shall be the head and not the tail? Do you understand what she's saying? that they should be the head in sports and not the tail. So that is a reason why they should divert from church on that day. It sounds good, doesn't it? To the sensual, to the carnal mind, it sounds like, yeah, that makes sense. This is the deceitfulness of Jezebel. You may not always spot it, but no one thing which is this if it will take you away from the worship of God, if it will take you away from honoring God's house, God's altar, hmm, just be warned, she's probably at play. When it targets the altar, it targets the servants of the Lord. Hmm. She will attack, undermine, and undermine the work of the Lord, the service and the altar. And when you see this happening, know that person is under the influence. Or if you see yourself operating in it, know that you are what? Under the influence. There was so much I wanted to touch on because, but I'm going to stick to the altar. As I said, 
maybe Papa will allow us one day to go more, 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 more into this. But that's okay. The nature of Jezebel. Number one, they seek out positions of power. Jezebel loves to take control of the home and most importantly, the church. I want to touch on this quickly. You remember what I said? It's a deceitful spirit. It may look, and that's what I said, it may look to the senses like when it's operating through a person, it may look like the person is likable and likes everybody. But it will be operating on the other side and dividing everybody. That's how dangerous. That's how dangerous that spirit is. When it's working through somebody, it will be looking like they are uniting the children of God. But when you look at the actual actions, it is dividing them. It is taking them away from the word of God. Did God really say? Did your pastor really say? Did the prophets really say? Did the leaders of the house really say? No, we don't have to listen to that. You know, they're, they're extreme. God is looking for extremists. We are not looking for extremists in the world. God is looking for extremists. God is looking for those that will confront, not tolerate. We should not tolerate in our individual lives. And God is not looking for those who will tolerate. If you will tolerate this spirit, before you know it, the church, the congregation, whether it be here or any other congregation, it will just splinter away. It will splinter it was splinter. It can't be tolerated. When you look at the Lord, when he's speaking in Revelations, he says, unto the church here, unto the church there, unto the church there. The Lord is also looking at Chogi and saying, unto the church in Durham region. If we tolerate Jezebel, if we tolerate Jezebel and we stay in that place, God, no, God forbid, it won't happen to us. God will remove that candlestick. Those who have an ear, let them hear. God will remove the candlestick. But it will not happen to us, will it? Amen. Because the Lord has already led us into a place of mercy. Repentance. Mercy that brought repentance. And from repentance, healing of this congregation. Amen. Revelation 2.20, verse 23. It says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. She calleth herself a prophetess. And this was a literal woman operating by the spirit of Jezebel. She was a, what looked like a prophetess. What's a prophetess? One, what is a prophet or prophetess? A mouthpiece of the Lord. She looked like she was a mouthpiece of the Lord. She looked like she was a mouthpiece of the Lord. But guess what she was doing? She was teaching and seducing the Lord's servants to commit what? fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols and he said I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she what repented not I was saying to my wife when mercy comes when the Lord draws something to your heart that's mercy when the Lord tells you of your your sin it's because he loves you because he doesn't want you to walk in that sin because he doesn't want you though you are not judged by him he doesn't want the enemy to have a hold in your life he wants you to repent so he reminds you there's so many scriptures I can't go into them but he says if you are ignorant when you sin 
if you sinned in ignorance and it comes to your heart that you sinned, bring this offering to the temple. How did it come to your heart? It's because of mercy. So when that mercy comes, what is your duty? Your duty, you can't create the mercy. You can't see the thing that you do not know is there. But when it comes to your knowledge, what is it that you're meant to do? The only thing you need to do as a son of God, as a child of God, is to what? Repent. That's why Papa said, but they died. <laughs> they died. Why did they die? They didn't have to die. They just didn't want to fall into his mercy. So they did not repent. So they died. And he said, behold, I will cast her into a bed. And them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. If you're going to look into this Greek, it, it's not a bed, just a bed. She will lie down. He says, I will cast her into affliction. I will cast her into sickness. She won't get out from that. And those that have operated with her happily, they will share of her great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. This is Jesus. You know, sometimes people want to believe that, you know, the Lord was not merciful. He was not kind. He was not forgiving. He was forgiving, but we know that the blood, <laughs> the blood has covered so much. And we thank you, Lord. But don't think that Jesus is just like, you know, they try to make him like some kind of soft, soft cuddly toy. He's the same one coming with 10,000s of his saints. He's the same one with a double-edged sword in his mouth. He's the same one that would destroy his enemies with the breath of his coming. He is still God. And he says to them, And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he, which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to what? Your works. Now, Number two, I want to say quickly, I have married a Jezebel, and he turned, he was already wicked, he was already doing evil, but he became more evil. But it's not automatic that if you marry somebody that is, look, I'm not recommending that now as a New Testament church, by the way. I'm saying that it's not automatic that just because he married a, a daughter of a Zidonian that he had to be wicked. Fair. Joseph married a daughter of a priestess that did not worship God. But because Joseph knew, Joseph was a man that loved God, he does not tolerate wickedness. Look at his life. He does not tolerate wickedness. So what did he do? Does it say that the wife led him away? If your wife or your husband is leading you away, you yourself, you are soft. They are soft. Number two, they work with an Ahab. They seek an Ahab. They seek a passive person. They love it when someone is passive towards the commandments of God. Because the, 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 the major attribute of Jezebel is that she is controlling. She seeks to control by any way she can. Either from emotions... She will use emotions. If that emotion can work to control you, she'll use it. If it's sexuality, she'll use it. If it's sensuality, she will use it. Anything, manipulation, deceit, she will use it because she cannot be out of control. She wants to control. Jezebels tend to form alliances with Ahabs. The nature of their relationship is that the passive man allows the woman, or vice versa, who gets things done to take over. Okay, let me give you a quick story. Ahab, he was looking for Naboth's land. And he says, okay, let me, give it, let me make it quick for you, but say it quickly. She was looking for Naboth's land. And he said, far be it from me to give you my, the inheritance of my father. You see, if you don't know the word very much, you may not understand where this comes from. The Bible is clear. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark 
and all the people shall say amen. That says Deuteronomy 27, 17. Nebuchadnezzar was a man that understood the law of God. He says in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 19, 14, Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. So he knew that he cannot give this land that was inherited from his father to Ahab. He even said, let me give you a different land. But Ahab was not content. Ahab went home crying. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. He went home crying. <laughs> That's what will happen to all worshippers of Baal. They'll be crying in their bed. He went home crying. And then his strong wife comes. I have, what's wrong? What's wrong, my dear? Sorry, I've said a lot. And I have says, I wanted Nabos land. And he said, it's his father's inheritance. And he won't give it to me. And she said, are you not the king of Israel? You see, that's what I'm saying. You see, you see the deceitfulness here? It could look like, well, you're king now, so... Just take the land. But because he himself is someone who tolerates evil, he tolerates this Jezebelic spirit. He tolerates the breaking down of the law, the commandments, the statutes of the Most High. He did not even know what he was doing is wrong. And he did not have a wife that could tell him otherwise because she was Jezebel. Operating by Jezebelic spirit. So by central way, it sounded right, but it was wrong. She said, don't worry, I will look after it. And she went, called two men by manipulation. She said, I'm going to get this land. This is what you have to do. Go in front of the men. Say that, go in front of the, the town and say that Naboth has blasphemed God. Ah! Jezebel. Ah! So wait, 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 wait. So that, that's what I'm trying to say. Jesus is talking of a Jezebel that was in the church. I bet you that same Jezebel has said to people, you are blaspheming God. Who are you to be in this church? You are committing sexual immorality. Who are you that is leading people to idols while she herself was leading people to idols and sexual morality? So the rest is history. Naboth was killed. And I have got the land. Number three, I believe, can I, four minutes? Thank you, Pastor David. Don't want to put you on the spot there. Huh? We can't, we can't, we can't. This is Canada. We operate by time. <laughs> um, number three, they need, they need tolerance. You see, can I encourage, I'm going to encourage every servant of God, wherever you find someone operating by Jezebel in your house or in God's house, trying to erode your fellowship with God, trying to take you off the path, you see, okay, look, listen, let me explain. Can I just use this example? So don't think I'm saying everyone, everyone you know, Jezebel only operates in women, but can I just use this example quickly? The Lord says, come and pray to me. And then your wife, for instance, not your wife, not our wife, so I'm just giving an example, says to you, how can you leave me? You've left me for five days without making love. <laughs> I'm just giving an example. And you've told her strictly that I need to go and pray to the Lord. He's told me to come. And she says, no, if you go there, mm, you're not having any relations for the next two weeks. My friend, go to the Lord. Go to the Lord. You're looking at me. Go to the Lord. Go to the Lord. If it becomes an argument, it becomes a strife. I, listen, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying to you, don't be, don't be caring to your wife. You can make her try to understand. But if she is still pushing and says, no, I will not do this. I will not do that. You will not get this. You will not get that. I will do this to you. I'll do that to you. Because you just simply want to go and pray because the Holy Spirit told you to go and pray. My friend, go and pray. Go and pray. 
when you, when you stop doing the things of the Holy Ghost, when you stop doing the things of the Holy Spirit in the altar, in the house, when there are people that are fighting you because you are doing what God told you to do, and you know those things that God has told you to do, keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. If they like you, they like you. If they don't like you, they don't like you. So you will be liked by everyone in the world. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. It doesn't mean we go to, to cause strife. But you must be able to stand. God is looking for servants that will stand on his word, that will stand on his commandments, that will stand to his teachings, that will do what the Lord wants done. If you will curb to men, and to the influences of men or cliques or groups that have gathered against you, then you are no friend of God. I said it. If you like it or not, you are no friend of God. If the Bible says, those who honor me, I will honor. Those who despise me, I will lightly esteem. Jezebel needs an Ahab because they need someone to tolerate them so that they can dominate them. Jezebel is not happy when she comes across strong servants of God. If you have a friend and Jezebel is operating through her, she will not like it when you stand up for what is right. If you are a pastor and you have a friend that is operating by Jezebel, she will not like it when you tell her no, especially if it comes to the things of God. She will fight you. She will fight you. Number four. They go after the altar. And here I have to finish. I'm sure that somebody else will cover the rest of the pieces. The end goal of Jezebel is to attack the altar and replace it with a carnal one. Do you know you go to some churches and you see thousands upon thousands, but you cannot even feel the, the presence of God. Jezebel has so encroached in the church that it looks like true worship. It looks like everything is happening the way, oh, everyone's cheering, da, da, da. but you don't see repentance. You go into certain churches and people are doing exactly what they want to do. Exactly what they want to do. It's not even by the word of God. They're just doing what they want to do. I feel like this today. There's an advert in the in UK. I feel like chicken tonight. Listen. I feel like this today, I feel like that tomorrow. That's not how God works. That's not how God works. You hate what God hates. You love what God loves. You do what he tells you to do. You do what he tells you to do. He knows more. He sees all things and hears all things. So one thing I will say is the message, as I said, is so lengthy, but not so lengthy, but it's longer. But what I will say to you is this. Anything that has been operating, any Jezebelic spirit that has been operating in Choki, I said to the Lord today, and the Lord said, strip that spirit naked. We are exposing the traits of that spirit so that you will no longer have any place to hide in Chogi, Karabokochi, Kakakamparaba, or in any other congregation, Takabaraba, Tontiaka, that belongs to the Most High God. So take notice, Jezebel, Kapatantika, Katantaraba. The time for you to lay down on the bed of fire has come. Barakokototonikaka. The time, Barakokoishika, Katandaraba, for you to be cast out from the midst of God's people, so that all things may be restored unto divine order, has come. You will no longer be tolerated. We will stand, we will stand with the Lord, and we will walk by the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen.